myself, Dr. K. Vishnu, Alamanaju, Department of Mechanical Engineering, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering, Bindigal Hyderabad. In this session, we are going to study the moment of inertia of a composite section by considering uh, the semicircular section. Here it is. So, here, the moment of inertia of uh, uh, composite sections means more than one section will be joined, like I sections. There are three rectangles that are joined together. Then, then it is the, known as the composite section. Now, let me give a glance of previous session. That is a semicircular session. For the semicircular session, about AC, it is the base of a semicircle, or, or it is a half of the solid circle. For a circle, moment of inertia of a circle, that is, I circle equal to pi d power 4 by 64. It is semicircle, that means half of the solid circle, then it becomes pi d power 4 by 64 by 2, that is pi d power 4 by 128, that is nothing but 0 0.393 r power 4. That is about the base. Whatever area here, a equal to pi r square by 2, that is area equal to pi r square by 2, and h equal to 4 r by 3 pi, that is, it is about the distance of the centroid, the vertical distance from the base. Okay, that is nothing but here h equal to 4 r by 3 pi. We want about passing through centroidal axis moment of inertia. According to parallel axis theorem, if you want to find out about the base AC, IC equal to IAC equal to IG plus area times h square, where IG is the axis which is passing through the center of gravity of a semicircular section. Parallel to base AC that is parallel to XX. So IG plus AH square. We want IG. Then if IG is required, IG equal to IAC minus AH square. What is that IAC here? That is IAC equal to 0.393 times R power 4 or pi by 8 times R power 4 minus area pi R square by 2, where H equal to 4R by 3 pi whole square. Then if you substitute it, come it uh, we'll get it as 0.11 r power 4. So, I about the base, IAC is greater than IZ or IAC is the sum of IZ and AH square. Now, we covered these problems in previous session. Now, coming to moment of inertia of a composite section, there are various steps we have to follow. First of all, what is the composite section? Composite means more than one cross section joined together that is placed together, suppose it's the composite section, H section, C section, L sections, okay, these are all uh, composite sections. First of all, we have to split up the given section into the plane areas, such as whatever may be rectangular, square, triangular, circular, etc. And we have to find out the center of gravity of that section. Which section? We have to, sec we have to find out the center of gravity of the whole section. First of all, you have to split up and into the up the section of the plane and find the center of gravity of the complete section. And we have to find out the moment of inertia of these areas about their respective center of gravity, about their respective centers of gravity. Yeah, meaning is that suppose if we consider, we are going to consider the section of I section. To explain, to make you to understand better these uh, these steps, I consider it as a I section. This I section is split up into various sections. It is section one, section two, and section three. And after splitting up, what to do? We have to find out the center of gravity of this I section. That is a step one. What is the section step? We have to find out the moment of areas, moment of inertia of these areas about their respective centers, centers of gravity. This is, these are the centers of gravity. This is symmetrical about both x-axis and y-axis. What is individual sections centers of gravity? Suppose here it is B1 and it is D1. Parallel to x-axis or parallel to y-axis, horizontal axis, horizontal axis, what is this IZ passing through that? Suppose here again, small values x1 and x1 x1 and x1 that is b1 d1 cube by 12 ig x1 equal to b1 d1 cube by 12 next this is x2 
the victim the section 2 is b2 and the depth is d2 then what about igx2 that is igx2 equal to b2 d2 cube by 12 next igx3 this is x3 this is having a width b3 depth d3 then what will happen that is b3 d3 igx3 equal to b3 d3 cube by 12 that is the meaning of uh, moment of inertia. This is, we consider parallel to x x axis. Similarly, parallel to y y axis, we should have the data of individual center of gravity, respective centers of gravity. The next step, third step is very important here. Now transfers, transfer this moment of inertia. Moment of inertia about the required axis. We have to transfer this moment of inertia about the required axis A B by the theorem of parallel axis theorem suppose if it is iab about wherever axis there that distance that is iab equal to ig we find out all ij's if you want this iab is parallel to horizontal axis then ig should be horizontal about horizontal parallel to horizontal pa parallel to this iab axis passing through the center of gravity of those respective sections and area of the individual section where h is the distance between that center of gravity to about this axis iab okay here distance between the required axis and the center of gravity of the section then where a is the area of the section and ig is the moment of inertia of the section about its centers of gravity and parallel to the axis ab there is a meaning yeah what is the meaning here now suppose let us go back now i want i u we want about i a b is about somewhere else here now i a b equal to i a b equal to there are three sections are there the three sections are there section one plus parallel to i x x one x one x one i x two x two plus i x three x three now I'm writing here I x1 x1 equal to I x1 x1 means about section 1. Yeah, the better is that you get confusion. I x x1 we made it that is ig x1. Yeah. I a b equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. This I1 about A B total of the section 1, section 2, section 3. What about I1? The I1 is having, what is I1 here? I'm going to show you the sample of uh, one section one. I1 equal to IGX1 plus A1 times the distance, whatever H1, this X1 to the sanction, this G1 to this distance out to AB. Okay, whatever that distance is D3 plus D2 d3 plus d2 whatever next one d1 plus d1 by 2 whole square that is a h h square what about a1 area of the rectangular section 1 b1 d1 igx1 that is igx1 where it is igx1 equal to b1 d1 cube by 12 plus area of section 1 b1 d1 what about h1? This is d3 plus d2 plus d1 by 2 for the square. That is i1. What about i2? The next step, i2. Yes, i2 is, I am writing here i2. i2 equal to igx2 plus a2, area of the section 2 times. What about y2? y2 means what is the distance this h2 is? xx2 this passing through this is this is a section. What about the distance? The distance is d3 plus d2 by 2. Whole square. What about igx2? igx2 b2 d2 cube by 12 plus area of the section 2 b2 d2 times d3 plus d2 by 2 whole square that is i2. In that manner, I3 also. Then the sum of I1, I2, I3 is the moment of inertia about line AB. Okay, that is us.
third part. What about fourth part? The moments of inertia of the given section may now be obtained by algebraic sum of the moments of inertia about the required axis. So what is that step one? We started here that I A B equal to I1 plus I2 plus I3. This is the fourth step. Here, the most important step in the calculation of the moments of inertia about the composite section, that is the step three. If we follow these four steps, if uh, these four steps are followed, then we can easily calculate the moment of inertia of any composite section. Okay, let us begin. While solving the problems, we can understand better the concept, theoretical concepts, how we have to apply and and we can by solving the problem we can understand better let us begin here there are it is the l section we have to find out the moment of inertia about which section which align that is kk this kk is at a distance of 100 millimeters from fa side and it depends upon the calculation here we are going to divide first what is the first step but the, the first step is that we have to split up given in the given section into rectangular uh, into simple figure simple geometry the simple geometries are uh, rectangle square triangle etc okay which are known uh, moment of inertia after this here first of all what to do we have to find out, let us split up the area, the step one, the split up area into rectangles, this split up, this is the section one, the width of this, what is the width of this Fe, this Fe D1, DD1 if you consider, whatever Fe DD1, the section is that, this is 40 millimeters width and what about height, this is 120 millimeters, so area is that 120 into 40, 120 by 40. So we know that moment of inertia, the section one about its center of gravity that is parallel to this axis, vertical about parallel to the KK axis, that axis we have to make it. That is 120 times 120 into 40 cube by 12. It comes here like this. This is B1 and here it is D1. Now, about this session, what is the passing through center of gravity and parallel to this axis kk, that is y y axis, for that d1 b1 cube by 12. Okay, that is i z1. We are considering parallel to kk axis. So 120 times 40 cube by 12, that is 640 into 10 cube millimeter power 4. Okay, next one. And the distance between we want the what is our formula? The, the, the derived expression is that that is I1 section 1 equal to IG1 plus A1 H1 square. IG1 we calculated what is the A1? Area 1 is 40 into 120. A1. And what about H1? This H1 is the H1 is the distance of this section to this KK, this distance. Whatever that distance comes, that distance is this distance, this much is 40 by 2, that is 20, this is 100. So 100 plus 40 by 2, 100 plus 40, 100 from here and here 20 by 2 off of the distance of 40, half of 40, that is 20, 100 plus 20, that is 120 millimeters h1. Now ig1 plus a1 h1 square, what is the ig1? ig1 640 times 10 cube. A1 120 into 40, H1 120 square, then 6, 69.76 into 10 power 6 millimeter power 4, that is I1. Whatever similarly, moment of inertia about KK. So we want KK here, the inertia about its center of gravity parallel to KK, that means here, which one here? This is the section. Now this section is highlighted. If you consider this section, okay, and parallel to which axis KK, parallel to KK means this vertical axis. What about IG2 at IG2 equal to, IG2 equal to how much? 
Ig to parallel Ig to means 40 times 240 cube by 12. That is 46.08 into 10 power 6 millimeter power 4. That is Ig2. Alright. What is the second step? We know that I2 equal to sum of Ig2 and A2H2 square. This Ig2 we calculated the value of the Ig2 is 46.08 times 10 power 6 millimeter power 4. What about H2? H2 means distance of the center of gravity to this about kk axis. Now whatever this distance is we want this is k to a kk to a f distance plus this distance total distance 1 plus 2 okay this this distance and distance sum of so 100 plus what about the center of gravity of individual rectangle 240 by 2 100 plus 240 by 2 that is 220 millimeters now i2 equal to according to parallax theorem ig2 plus a2h2 square what about IG2 46.08 times 10 power 6 plus A2 240 times 40 H2 220 square that is 510.72 into 10 power 6 millimeter power 4. Now IKK equal to I1 plus I2. What is I1? Moment of inertia of the section 1 and I2 is the moment of inertia of the section 2. So, moment of inertia of the section 1, I2, I1 plus I, that is I1 and I2, the section 1 and 2. What is section 1 value? 69.76 into 10 power 6 plus I2, 510.72 10 power, times 10 power 6. The sum is 580.48 10 power 6 millimeter per 4. That is the moment of inertia about the axis KK. Now, you may get doubt. We did not calculate here the center of gravity of this section. Why we did not calculate the centroid of this section? Because they did not ask to find out the moment of inertia passing through the centroidal axis of this section. They asked about the, some arbitrary section, about the arbitrary section KK. That's why we calculated. Suppose when to calculate the center of gravity of this, this section, we have to calculate the center of gravity if it is if the moment of inertia of the center of gravity of the section of this section is passing. About that we want. If you want to find out, then we have to locate the center the center of, center of gravity of the section, then only. Okay. Here it is some arbitrary section KK. That's why no need to find out the center of gravity of this area. Okay, the next one. Find the moment of inertia of the T section. The T section is the composite section here. There are two rectangles are joined are placed in such a in a T shape. That's why it is a T section. If at this T section there are two parts are there. Two rectangles part 1 and part 2 section 1 and section 2 the section 1 is known as the flange top flange section 2 the section 2 is known as the web now one flange top flange and web is the okay uh, this is a T section having the dimensions are 150 millimeters by 50 millimeters web as flange it is 150 by 50 and web is also 150 by 50 now we have to find out Moment of inertia about xx and yy axis through the center of gravity of the section. This is yy. We have to find out the center of gravity that is xx. So, to find out the center of uh, find first of all, we want to find out yy and xx. I xx and i y y to be found out further what to do we have to locate the center of gravity let us begin it is symmetrical about which axis symmetrical about single one line of symmetry about a vertical axis so that it is an unsymmetrical about x x so is what y axis location we know 
and what about asymmetrical that is x x we have to know it that means we need vertical distance what is the vertical distance of center of gravity that is bar y the bar y means a1 y1 plus a2 y2 by a1 plus a2 what is the area of the section 1 150 times 50 so this is the reference axis i am taking so at the extreme top portion, bottom edge that is y1 a1 equal to 150 times 50 what about y1 from the centroid to bottom that is 150 plus 50 by 2 that is 175 millimeter what about a2 a2 is 50 times 150 what about y2 Y2 is 150 by 2, that is 75 millimeters. Substitute A1, Y1 and A2, Y2 in this bar Y expression, then what we will get? Location of the center of gravity of this T section. That is A1, Y1, A2, Y2. We have calculated here. 150 times 50, 7500 square millimeters. Y1, 150 plus 50 by 2, 175. A2 150 times 50, 7500 square millimeters, Y2 is 75 millimeters. Substitute in this bar by equation, expression that is A1Y1 plus A2Y2 by A1 plus A2, then the location of the centroid, center of gravity of this T section is 125 millimeters. Here it is 150, that is above the location. Here this is the location of excess center of gravity. G at a distance of how much from the bottom 125 millimeters. We want now parallel axis will apply. First, what to do? First step is split up. We split it up. Second step is we find out the individual. Second step is if it is symmetrical about we have we located the center of gravity. Now we want to find out the moment of inertia about x axis. We want par uh, parallel to x x. First, what to do? First, individual center of IG, individual center of moment of inertia passing through center of gravity of the individual section. That is IG1. Next, IG2 parallel to x x because it is about x x. Our moment of inertia of individual sections passing through center of gravity should be parallel to xx axis. So, IG1 equal to 120 times 50 cube by 12. That is 1.5625 into 10 power 6 millimeter per 4. Next, what is H1? H1 is the distance. This is the H1. How to find out the distance H1? Okay. This is the distance H1. How to find out that? This is 125 millimeters from top. What about but from, from bottom it is 125. From top, how much this distance is? Here it is 125. That is 25. And this distance is 25 plus 50. This is 75 millimeters. Okay. Now we want this distance H1. That means 75. How it comes? 75 minus this distance. This portion, if we subtract, what is that? That portion is 25 millimeters. That means it is 50 by 2. 75 minus 25. How much 25 minus 25? 75 minus 25, then H1. H1 equal to 75 minus 25. That is 50 millimeters. Okay, you may get how we got this 175 minus 125. Okay, you can make it. 175 minus 125. This is the total distance. This is how much here? 100. From where they got it? Section 11XX. This is 175. 175 means the center of gravity. They considered here this portion. Whatever this portion is, 150 plus 50 by 2. 150 plus 50. What 25? 50 by 2. That is 175. 175. This is the total 175 minus, this is 175, no, from this line to bottom line, 175, a chain. This is the line 
from here to here it is 175 okay from here to here it is 125 from this 175 portion minus 175 subtract this 125 from 175 then we got this portion that is h1 that h1 equal to 50 millimeters there are many methods are there okay next what to do what is the next step if we know ig1 and h1 area we know what is that a1 a1 equal to what is that a1 equal to section 1 that is a rectangle 150 times 50 okay now i1 equal to what is the i1 equal to ig1 plus a1 times h1 square what is that ig1 equal to 1.5625 into 10 power 6 a1 150 times 50 what is h1 50 millimeters substitute here you will get it i1 this is what i1 equal to ig1 plus a1 75 7500 h150 square then we got i1 now what is the next portion i2 we want about ixx ixx equal to i1 plus i2 this i1 is parallel to xx axis i2 is individual section section 2 is parallel to xx what about i2 i2 means again i2 equal to i g2 plus a2 times h2 square what about i g2 that i g2 equal to parallel to passing through centroid 150 here this xx this axis is how much here 125 the centroid is at a distance of from the base 125 millimeters now it is 150 and what about 50 the axis that is 50 times 150 cube by 12 14.0625 into 10 power 6 millimeter per 4 now the, now we want again that xx distance this is xx distance this is the g2 what is the h2 this is h2 okay now 125 minus what about this distance 75 150 by 2 no 125 minus 75 equal to h2 that is h2 that is 50 millimeters what about a2 value a2 equal to 50 times 150 now ig2 substitute here a2 value 150 times 50 h2 50 square that is what we did here i2 equal to ig2 plus a2 h2 square what about ig2 14.0625 times 10 power 6 plus a2 7500 into h2 50 square that is 32.8125 into 10 power 6 millimeter power 4 now the moment of inertia passing through the centroidal axis that is this axx one at a distance of 125 millimeter equal to ixx equal to i1 plus i2 what about i1 this is the I1, 20.3125 into 10 power 6 millimeter per 4. What about I2? This value. The sum of I1 and I2, we got it as Ixx. That Ix is 53.125 into 10 power 6 millimeter per 4. Now, this is the half part is over. What did they ask? Xx, about Xx. Next, we have to find out about yy. Again, how to find about yy we want parallel to centroid, about yy axis. About this is the yy axis. The centroid is passing through, this is symmetrical about yy axis. How to make it again? Come on, we make it. Simplification iyy equal to i1 about yy axis parallel to don't get confused. This is y parallel to yy plus i2 yy parallel to yy. And here i1 yy equal to ig parallel to yy plus a1 
This is I G one parallel to Y Y plus A one times H one parallel to Y Y distance between H one to Y Y distance. The center of gravity H one is the okay. Whatever here, this H one. What is the distance between Y Y axis and centroid of the section one and section two? H one Y Y equal to zero. H two parallel to H two. Which distance between H two to Y Y? What is H two to? That means section two H two. That equal to distance of center of gravity Y Y and center of gravity that is zero. That means H term is zero. That means this zero times A one. This product is zero. Similarly, then what happens here? Okay, if you substitute one thing, I Y Y equal to this portion. Next, I G to Y Y parallel to Y Y axis, vertical axis. Next, A two times H two Y Y. This H two distance between the axis passing through Y Y. And center of gravity parallel to y-axis of individual section one, section two are zero. That means these two are zeros. Then the sum of i g one y y plus i g two y y parallel to what about i g one y y? i g one y y parallel to that is d two b b one q by d one b one q by twelve. That is fifty times one fifty q by twelve plus what about this axis? One fifty times Fifty Q by twelve. This is what here. Fifty times one fifty Q by twelve. Fourteen point zero six two five into ten power six millimeter power four. That is I one. I one parallel to Y. This is I two parallel to section two. That is one fifty times fifty Q by twelve. One point five six two five into ten power six millimeter power four. The sum of I Y Y equal to sum of I one Y Y time plus I two Y Y sum of I one and these two sum. Then we get it. That is fifteen point six two five ten power six millimeter power four. Okay. Here the moment of inertia parallel to x x is I x x is greater than I Y Y. Why i x x is greater than i y y? This i x x is is passing through center of gravity because here the t section is not symmetrical about horizontal x x axis. It is unsymmetrical. It is symmetrical about y y. That's why i y y become because h u becomes the distance between center of gravity and y y because this y y is passing through the center of gravity of this t section. That's why h becomes zero. Product of h times y becomes zero. We are only left the sum of centroidal axes parallel to y y axis. That's why i x x is greater in comparison to i y y. Okay, in this composite section part, we studied two sections. One is L section, another one is a T section. Okay, and in this L section, we not find out any center of gravity because We already located about KK. There are some axes, reference axes. Why here the KK is not passing through center of gravity of this L section. That's why no need to calculate center of gravity of this section. Whereas in the case of T section, we have calculated the T section a center of gravity. Why? Because it is asked that the moment of inertia of the axis. Should are passing through the center of gravity, passing through about the center of gravity we need. That's why we have to calculate the center of gravity. So that's why here to calculate moment of inertia about the center of center of about center of axis axis, we need the concepts of centroid calculations. That's why we calculate the centroid. After calculating the centroid, then we apply the parallel axis theorem. And uh, and determine uh, we found out the i x x and i y y values, and and concluded that the values of i x x in this section is greater than the value of i y y. Those axes are passing through the center of gravity of this t section. Okay, let me conclude that in this section we studied again what is the composite sections part. We covered 
and initially we started with semicircular section and we recapitulated the semicircular sections and uh, we solved the problems about on composite sections and also studied about the what are the what are the steps we have to use to calculate the moment of inertia of a composites of composite sections thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates